Hi, this is Swati from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we'll talk about non-functional testing. Now, non-functional testing just means that um, we are trying to still test a certain element uh, of the, you know, uh, software system that probably is not directly related to the business. Now, here is what I mean. Let's look at, if you're looking at a mobile application. Um, so if it is a mobile application, the first thing that you will look for, let's um, say you are looking at a dictionary app, something as simple as a dictionary app. So the, if you were to look at functional testing, you will test elements related to, uh, can you look for words? Does it show synonyms? Does it show antonyms? Uh, does it give you like, you know, sentence suggestions or usage suggestions, that sort of stuff. So when you are testing the elements of the application that are related to the core business itself or the core component that this system tries to help us with, then that is functional testing. We know that already. Uh, but then when you look at a mobile application, you have to look for whether or not it is compatible with Android and iOS and other, you know, mobile interfaces, uh, mobile environments. And then you'll also have to look for how does it, how much uh, memory it takes for it to, you know, download it and how much time it takes to load uh, and how it works in different network conditions. So for example, if you are looking at, you know, determining how it works in different network conditions, that is not related to the you know, words or meanings or anything that has to do with the dictionary app, right? But then, if this dictionary app is supposed to work in a mobile environment, it needs to satisfy, uh, you know, the requirements that pertain to working in different network conditions. So, this kind of requirements that are important for the system to work as a whole, but are not directed uh, directly related to the core competency of uh, what the application is all about. That kind of requirements are non-functional requirements and testing those requirements is non-functional testing. And in this segment, what we, so this is not just applicable for mobile applications, this is applicable for all software apps. So whether you're looking at Windows, web, standalone, or you know uh, mobile application so anything else so everything has to uh, everything has a set of non-functional requirements um, that are important for us to make sure that we test them at the same time there is functional testing as well um, so some of the examples of non-functional testing are performance testing as I was telling you how to, how long it takes to load how many concurrent users can it support all of that stuff comes into performance testing and then there's usability testing so when we are talking about usability testing um, see for example going back to the dictionary example so if I'm looking for a word how easy is it for me to look it up so when I'm typing does it give me like auto suggestions uh, and then you know does it show me um, I mean how how satisfactory is my experience of using the dictionary app all of those things become part of usability testing and then there is also security testing you know uh, can this program be hacked uh, how hack proof is it are, are there any security vulnerabilities that sort of stuff now these are just examples there are many more kinds of you know for non-functional testing that can be done and as is the general practice with STH, we'll talk about, I mean, we already addressed what non-functional testing is. We'll also talk about where this is performed, when this is performed, how, who performs this, and why do we need this in the first place. So let's move on. I mean, I, as always, we'll just make notes as we go. So what we talked about it, as I said, who performs this, we'll come to that later. And when is non-functional testing carried out? This is a very important consideration when we are talking about non-functional testing. Now we all know that there are four different levels or stages or you know phases of testing basically. So there's unit testing, integration, followed by system testing and the UAT. So a lot of times there is a um, a bit of a uh, you know um, misconception that system testing is equal to functional testing 
This is not usually the case because system testing is a phase. It's not a technique. So it is not, it, it is, uh, so it goes without saying that system testing does not mean just functional testing. Usually in the system testing, the order in which things are carried out is first functional testing is carried out, yes. So functional testing is a part of system testing. And once the functional testing is successful and then non-functional testing is carried out. Now you might be wondering why that is the case. Why can't I just do non-functional testing to begin with and then do functional testing? The reason why functional testing becomes a prerequisite for non-functional testing is, see, in the dictionary application, if it is, you know, not letting you look for a word. Um, so it's not letting any lookup happen. It is not suggesting anything. No results are coming up when you're looking for even a simple word like result. So let's say in the dictionary you're trying to find the meaning of the word result. For something as simple as result, if the dictionary app is not giving you results, then as an app, dictionary fails. So when when the dictionary fails, it doesn't matter how fast it loads. Let's say it loads in as little as a nanosecond. So even if it loads in a nanosecond or it might be like, you know, rock solid in terms of uh, its security, that it might not be, you know, uh, at all vulnerable to hacking. So it is 100% secure. And then uh, maybe it is, you know, very, very easy to use. But what is the point of all of these other non-functional elements working fine when the core functionality itself is, you know, um, poor and it's you know, not working the way it's intended to work. So functional testing is first carried out because that's like, you know, the main reason why it's built then non-functional testing is followed. Uh, so when this, this happens, this happens in the system testing phase for all applications. And uh, this also uh, might happen on a production application just to get some, you know, uh, performance uh, statistics and that sort of stuff. So this probably, again, this which will bring us to the where question. So uh, non-functional testing can happen both in, mostly in the QA environment because before we send it out live, it is a good idea to gain some statistics and perspective on how it fares in the non-functional area as well. Uh, but at, at, in addition to QA environment, sometimes production systems also might undergo this kind of uh, non-functional testing to make sure that, you know, uh, real-time env environment is also as robust as possible. Coming back to the when question, this usually is carried out in the uh, system testing phase and this is usually uh, preceded. Uh, or this follows the, um, the functional testing. So once functional testing is complete and things are, you know, looking good, and then we move to the non-functional um, non testing part. Why is this performed? This is very important because, see, if, uh, I mean, again, there is always this confusion on which is more important. Is the functional more important? Is the non-functional more important? There is really no such differentiation that is really, you know, we cannot say which one is more important because these are two complementary elements that have to work together in order for an application to be successful in real time. So why is this done? To ensure that we test 100% functional and non-functional stuff because both of them have to work together uh, otherwise the system fails. Uh, and how is this done? This is also another question that I get asked most of the times. I mean, how is this testing done? Uh, but before that, let's answer something which is much more simpler, which is who performs the system test. Uh, it is the QA team, but usually uh, for performance, security, uh, usability, and you know, this kind of testing, um, this requires a separate skill set as, as such. So when you're looking at performance testing or system testing, uh, security testing, sorry. Uh, so when you're looking at things like performance or security testing, th these um, this kind of testing uh, types will need for the tester to have an enhanced knowledge on the network protocols, a little bit of programming language, uh, understand, you know, uh, what kind of, um, you know, design elements went into the system and all that. So this is very technical. Uh, that is the reason why usually functional testing teams and, um, you know, uh, non-functional testing teams are different. So it is still 
you know, uh, QA team again comprises of both the functional and non-functional teams. Uh, however, for, for the most part, when we say the QA team, it, you know, synonymously means the functional team. Uh, but no, uh, the QA team also includes the non-functional team uh, testers. Uh, so usually this is done by, uh, you know, a little bit of... Um, testers that have a little bit of uh, technical expertise in their respective non-functional areas. Um, how? Coming back to the how question. See, a lot of times we, every time you look at a requirement, we have this urge to categorize them as whether they are functional, whether they are non-functional. I'll give you a real world example here. So there was this uh, one application that we were testing and there was a security uh, requirement you know, a document. And then there was a document uh, for functional requirements, of course. Now, there was one requirement in the security requirements document that said, after 10 minutes, the site is, you know, inactive, it should auto log out. So, fair enough. I mean, this sounds like a, you know, security requirement. Um, after 10 minutes, it should auto log out. I mean, good enough. Um, and then um, the, the situation was at the end of the testing, neither the security testing team has considered this requirement nor the functional testing team. So the logic of the functional testing team was that the, uh, the logout feature was in the security requirements document, so it wasn't part of our scope. While the security team, uh, you know, argued that it has nothing to do with any technical expertise, all you have to do is just wait and see for 10 minutes if it's automatically logging out or not. So this is definitely the responsibility of the functional testing team. So you see, with requirements like this, there's not a very clear-cut definition of which one is functional, which one is, you know, non-functional requirement. Um, so to the extent possible, I mean, how is this testing performed? Um, sometimes it might be just, you know, looking at a functional element, but, you know, enhancing a security part of the system. Uh, and also, we also recommend, I mean, also there's this question that how do we do non-functional testing? Do we write test cases for them? How, how do we tackle that? Um, so for non-functional testing, uh, usually for functional testing, let's talk about functional testing. Let's say there's a transfer operation. Uh, there's a bank account A, bank account B, there's an X amount of money that you're sending it to B, so that means they need to get um, debited from here and they must get credited over here. So this is a simple enough transaction. Now if I was doing a functional testing, I would say, I would write the test cases like, you know, log into account A, click, uh, you know, choose the respective amount perform the transfer, check your bank statement if the debit is happening, go back to B's account and see if, you know, the amount is getting credited. So four or five steps. Now, if I am performing a performance test on the transfer operation, I want to see how long it takes for the transfer to happen, you know, how much time it is taking for the amount to get debited, the amount to get credited. Now, if you take a close look here, the sequence of steps that you would follow is the same sequence of steps that you would normally follow to functional test a transfer operation. The difference here is the intention. What are you doing the transfer operation for? What is it that you're trying to look? So the functional test cases most of the time can be used for non-functional testing as well. However, the, the mode in which you'll perform this. So when you're trying to look at the, you know, amount of time it is taking, you might actually, you know, uh, create a code which will automatically look for the network consumption, the resource, uh, you know, the response time and all that. So the mode in which you do it might be different. Um, you know, the reason why you're performing the transfer might be different, but at the end of the day, it is the same sequence of steps that you would normally follow. So how is perform non-functional testing followed? Uh, we, it may or may not use functional test cases. And in some, time, some cases, it needs uh, specialized tools. Like for performance testing, you would need tools like HP Load Runner or something like that. Uh, for security testing, there are lots of scanners like Nmap and everything, lots of, uh, you know, vulnerability checking tools, penetration testing tools and all that. For usability testing also, uh, there are tools that will track the eye movement of the user and they will uh, determine how long a user has spent on a certain operation, uh, thereby determining whether or not an operation was easy for the user to perform or not. Um, so this is a brief overview of non-functional testing and also um, I, I believe that 
it's not a very good idea to demarcate all these requirements into whether they are functional, whether they are non-functional. So if there is a requirement, if we can check it at our initial level of functional testing, I believe we should take it up and do it all the same. Um, so that has been our take on the concept of uh, non-functional testing. Um, any comments or questions, please feel free to let us know. Thank you.